Howard Lindzen is the founder and general partner at Social Leverage. All opinions expressed by Howard and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Social Leverage or StockTwits. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for decisions. Guests may maintain positions and securities discussed in this podcast. Hi, you're watching Linsanity. I'm Howard Linsen. Today, very special guest, my friend and founder of Koifin, Rob Koifman. We're going to talk about his product. Welcome to the hot seat. You are on Linsanity. Hey, Howard. How does it feel? Feels great. Great setup. So where'd you buy that shirt? Uh, I think... Um, Is it a gift? Uh, it's my fi- f- now wife. I actually got married recently. My wife bought it for me uh, okay. from Banana Republic. Okay. Where'd you guys do your honeymoon? Uh, we. It was just like quick, unofficial. We haven't done anything yet, so... Congrats. This Thank is you. Rob uh, Koifman. And uh, we, Social Leverage, just full disclosure, we are investors in your company. Yes, you are. Uh, And Rob, tell us a little bit about Coifin. Uh, So Coifin, we are building analytical tools for investors, uh, basically giving people the ability to really understand what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. Uh, The way we do that is we give them a lot more and better data than what most people have, like from Yahoo Finance or some of the other websites. Um, we also have fundamental data, valuation data, macro data. So everything's in your fingertips. Uh, and it's really easy to access that data. So via dashboards, via graphing. Uh, so um, you can uh, access the uh, fundamentals really easily, build the charts. Uh, so very easy to go from data to information. And uh, inspiration, let's let's go back to the background. Um, we'll show the product in a little bit. Yeah. The How old are you? I'm 38. And where were you born? I was born in Ukraine, Chernovtsi. Chernovtsi, yeah, yeah, it's a big city. That's where Mila Kunis is from. And oh, she is. Fun fact. Yeah. The uh, how old is she? Uh, Around my age. Is there a Ukrainian Tinder? (laughs) I'm sure. Well, Tinder's global. I understand, but is there a Ukrainian version? Uh, I have. I am not sure. Ukrainian meets Ukrainian. Okay. The and is it close to Bulgaria? Uh, It's closer to Romania than Bulgaria. And it's huge on the risk map. It's a huge place. It, it, it's, it's, it takes a lot of soldiers, a lot of armies to occupy it. And how did you escape? Uh, m- m- Do you it, escape Ukraine? My parents uh, left Ukraine in 1986, and t- I did not have a choice. I was six years old. So. No, I know, but how did they leave? How did they leave? Uh, so as uh, Jews, you have to go through a long process, and they applied to leave in the late 70s, mm-hmm. and then the border got closed. And so they had to live in Russia for a long time. Uh, with other people knowing that they wanted to leave Russia, which was a wow. big, so they were called uh, refuseniks because they were refused uh, permission to leave. So that was like a big problem for them. Wow! And then they left in 1986 and landed where? Uh, in Brook in Brooklyn, New York. And so, do you have brothers and sisters? I have an older brother. Yeah. And what business is he in? Uh, he does like medical testing in the states. In New Jersey. So you come to the states. Uh, was your dad an entrepreneur? Uh, nope. Dad is an engineer. And so you're a bit of a geek. Uh, it's in the blood. I've seen you work. You're I'll, a geek. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. Now now they're called data scientists. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Are you a data scientist? I think what I used to do is consider data science now, like like data, like Excel and statistical stuff. And um, I had to learn SAS at one point, which is like a. So let's work back to the past. So yeah. You're, you're, you're a bit of a geek and you go to school. Where'd you go to Ru- school? Rutgers University. In New York. In New Jersey. In New Jersey. State University. Good school. Yeah, pretty good school. Top thousand. (laughs) Definitely top thousand in New Jersey. (laughs) And uh, you get out of school, and what do you do? Uh, I came in as a pharmacy major. Wow. Yeah, so... uh, Explains the shirt. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> legal drugs. Yeah. Um, and I was a pharmacy major and uh, hated it my first semester um, and wanted to switch into business, and that's what I did. So I switched into finance and minored in math. And so first job out of college? First job out of college was in uh, Goldman Sachs Research. So how did they uh, manipulate you to come there? Uh, <laughs> they, they recruited Rutgers? They did not. So yes. I, I, uh, so, you lied. so I basically, there was, uh, it was super hard to get from Rutgers to Wall Street. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, there were a couple of alumni and they offered this program called the REP program. Um, what, what? the, the uh, Rutger, uh, REP, uh, uh, Rutgers, okay. uh, something exposure program, uh, part of a group called LIBOR, Little Investment Bankers of Rutgers. Like oh my that? God. Uh, that's so derogatory. That's <laughs> is it? 
because they're little. little. Investment yeah. Banker? <laughs> yeah, junior investment banker. Okay. Rutgers. So if you basically interned for free for a year and you did a good job, they would hire you. So my junior year, I basically interned for, for free at Merrill Lynch. And so you started Goldman. Yep. Right, basically right out of college. Right out of college, yep. And so how many, I mean, obviously we, we don't like backing people from Goldman. So what, So how many years were you at Goldman? There's a number where you have to be less than. Uh, what do you mean? How many years were you at Goldman? Six. I think you lied. I lied? On my resume, you're fact checking. I'm, I'm fact checking post due diligence. 2002. You've to never back someone who stayed there that long. 2002 to 2008. And did they treat you well? Uh, yeah, I had two jobs there. My first job, uh, absolutely loved it. It was a research job, uh, probably because my I had a really good manager. And then my second job uh, did not get along with well, my manager. Yeah. So what was what you were in research? The, the whole first time? job was research. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started in uh, research for real estate mm-hmm. and then moved to portfolio strategy, which is covering the entire market. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, moved over after five years to uh, prop trading in London. So proprietary trading. So you, yeah, I know you lived in London. Was that so wh- what's your favorite city uh, in the world? Yeah, uh, my favorite city in the world. Uh, can I pick a country? I love Thailand. Thailand's you great. Like Thailand. I love Thailand. All right. We well, can't move until you sell the company. What? <laughs> so at Goldman, uh, did you like working in London? I did not love London. I liked the experience, but it's it's like a little, it was a little like uh, foreign to me. Like it's, okay. there's a lot of difficult things about London. And so do you think people treat you differently when you, do you drop Goldman a lot or do you, do people act, like, do you think that helps you or hurts you? Uh I think it definitely helps. I think okay. people respect. I still respected it more. No one befo- just swung at you. Uh, uh, w- uh, no one. No. I think okay. you're the only. You've never p- been embarrassed. Th- when you've never been embarrassed to say I worked at Goldman. I think you're the only person that really like. Well, uh, I'm the. It's it all, all trends start with one person, don't they, Charlie? <laughs> It takes one person to, to start a movement. That's right. But like, when did you decide that I want to start a business? Uh. It was three years ago, so about ten years after Go- after I left Goldman, so 2016. So, oh, so you left Goldman in oh oh eight, yeah. And then what did you do in between? What were the uh, dark years? I w- I was um, at Citigroup for three years, okay, doing uh, options and ETFs, right. Uh, and then I was at several hedge funds, and and so at the hedge fund, you decided there's a burning desire to start a company. Uh, and so I was at a a. a a hedge fund called Techni Capital, which is a tech-focused fund. Mm-hmm. I was doing stuff that was um, uh, related to like macro and options and all the stuff that wasn't tech-related. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fund uh, wasn't doing that well. Right. Um, and, and so they said, we both kind of decided that they have to focus on tech. So I started looking at other things. Um, I started trading on my own much more, started doing my own research. Uh, wanted to put out a research product for investors. So I right. wanted to kind of like... Uh, keep my ideas fresh, start writing a product. Um, and when I started to do that and using the tools available to me. Because you didn't have Bloomberg anymore. I did not have Bloomberg anymore. And when so I the, started that's to, the big bang. You just you didn't have your $20,000 blankie. Bloomberg is, is super powerful, but. You wouldn't turn off the, if, you, if I gave you 20 grand a day to spend on anything financial, would you spend it on Bloomberg? Um, if it weren't my money? Yeah, yeah I think so. Okay. So it's that that's the I mean, hold they wait, have on the industry. Wait, now I have Coifin, so I, I don't need Bloomberg. But well, sorry, you didn't no, no, no. answer that at first. <laughs> no, it was no, a trick I, question. Uh, I think Bloomberg is super powerful if you know how to use it. Yeah. And and what percentage of Bloomberg do you think people use? And we'll get into like the tricks and everything. So Bloomberg is everything for everyone on Wall Street. Uh-huh. So the average um, person. We're the only ones that can afford it. Yeah. Uh, so so just like to to set the the landscape. Um, there's 300,000 Bloomberg terminals in the world, right? So mm-hmm. uh, it's a super small portion of investors that have a Bloomberg. Right? right. So there's 200 million people in the world that are investing in the stock market globally. 200 million? And globally. Um, okay. In the U.S., it's about 50 million. And okay. so a very small portion of people have a Bloomberg. So you want to trade on your own. You put out a research crazy product. To, you put out a research product. Um, what were you using? Uh, so I started using like interactive brokers to trade, which sure. is great to trade, but not for research. And um, I started uh, using like you know ETF.com and huh. uh, Economics.com and huh. Yahoo Finance. So, so you were kind of macro. So, so it was kind of macro, and then for for the stock like TradingView, I thought was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a new product at the time. 
um, I I got a subscription to uh, like Cap IQ and Money and that's expensive and and yeah Cap IQ is uh, expensive. Cap, it's expensive, but uh, I thought like can How I? How much a month? Um, their um, their entry version or their low version is probably about eight hundred or a thousand bucks a month. That's real money. That's real money. But you know, I thought I was I wanted like a start a business, okay. so I was willing to make that investment if I Got if it. I liked it. And the business being investing on your own, investing on my own and putting out research. Okay. So seeing seeing if I could get like some subscribers and, and an audience and stuff okay. like that. Um, I was using uh, I tried money.net and I tried white charts, and I just thought that there's so much um, functionality that's missing. And uh, the user interface with all these systems was like super old. It was super antiquated. It was kind of like Web 1.0. Horrific. Uh, and really difficult to learn. Um, a lot of the analytics systems, they give you data, and then they're like, oh, just put it into Excel to do this or that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to put it into Excel. I just want you I'm to give me you 800 a, a month. Give, give me the it? functionality, right? Yeah. So um, that was something I was super frustrated with. And just started researching, like, why is it the case that there is kind of Bloomberg on one side and Yahoo Finance on the other side and not a lot of stuff in but the middle. Explain why it is the case. So I think... Not up to a- invite competition. It's hard, yeah, but like... No. I think up until recently, um, data was was uh, less of a, data was much more difficult to find and get. So, for example, for fundamentals, um, you really had uh, only Bloomberg and Reuters uh, that were selling fundamentals. And if you wanted fundamentals, you had to hire ten thousand people to go input them or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, over the past ten years, as uh, fundamentals, as companies have had to file electronically. That data has been become more accessible. Mm-hmm. So there's there's companies now scraping filings, offering that data. So that's kind of leveled the playing field of of, of fundamental data. For example, um, we get our data. We still pay uh, fundamental data is probably our highest cost right now mm-hmm. uh, because we get it from Capital IQ. So you want it clean and you want it. We want to clean stuff it, like that. And you want it trusted. We want it clean and trusted. So mm-hmm. so we really spend. Um, on, a, on a premium source there, but um, but that's why startups don't exist. Cap IQ, these guys have monopolies on. Th- th- these guys have monopolies, so now it's easier to to find the data. But really, what Bloomberg and Reuters did was they increased the price point every year, uh, kind of like driving that that wedge between affordable and and premium. Um, and there was no one in the middle that, that really had the data or really built anything. So, mm. so it just happened because Bloomberg was raising prices. It was, it was Bloomberg. It was, it's, it, it's a duopoly. Uh, they were raising prices. They were definitely uh, adding functionality. But you know, Mike Bloomberg is the fourth richest man in the world mm-hmm. because he's got a very profitable business or mm-hmm. in the U.S. Whatever. It's incredible. With three hundred thousand customers. With three hundred thousand customers, it's paying tw- paying twenty five thousand each. And what's so interesting, and I've attacked this industry. Uh, with my own small amounts of capital and voice, but uh, it's an amazing company. It's a great company. I love when I get pictures. Oh, we're going to be the next Bloomberg. It's ridiculous. And no one's going to be the next. Yeah. Only Bloomberg can be Bloomberg yep. is what I say. And he's not interested in that happening. Yep. <laughs> um, so I didn't know the way. So it's just interesting. The middle just got left because people were late. It's just no one really had the vision or cares to try. Or a lot of people have tried and be left yeah. on the side of the road. So, so, so I'd say... Um, so, so I'd say the uh, the premium providers like you know Bloomberg and Reuters they they went up. They had no incentive to go down. Mm-hmm. Um, recently, as I mean, you got to remember that uh, retail investing took off in ninety nine ninety nine two thousand right. So you really like up until then there was no reason to go middle market or, or mass market. Yeah. Um, and you've definitely had companies since then that well that Yahoo did a good job in ninety nine two thousand. Yahoo did a good job, and I'd say other companies. Um, um, you know, Y charts and Seeking Alpha, they, they've yeah. definitely carved out yeah. uh, a nice business kind of uh, servicing more more uh, mass market uh, tools. Full disclosure, we, in 2009, we were investors in Y charts as right. well. Right. Um, and so, but, you know, I... I didn't think anyone innovated on kind of the um, the data visualization, the graphing, really the didn't. analysts, and, and and that was kind of like my insight and my strength from uh, from prior jobs is is focusing on that sort of stuff. And I said that's kind of why I want to try it. Yeah. So how are you attacking? What angle did you choose to attack? So uh, you know we we kind of said like where can we um, where can we make the biggest splash and. Um, where we can make the biggest splash is really make a highly functional product with great data mm-hmm. uh, and make it available for free. Yeah. Uh, and that's... that. Right, so let's... And, and so anyway, so I discovered you through Alex Darhini. He's yep. a .72. He's a young guy. He's a VC. Yep. Stevie Cohen's fund. 
um, and he's a good friend. And he introduced me to you, and I was like, I loved it the minute I saw it. I, I, I didn't understand the name. I still don't understand it, but I got a koi fin. Okay, so I'm not going to bring that up today. <laughs> and I love it. Uh, so let's just pull up the site. This is us, me logged in. This is actually uh, my watch list, and we don't have to go through it, but you can kind of, if you're watching and not listening, you can kind of spend time seeing the kind of stocks that I follow. I'm a momentum person. But what I love about koi fin, me personally, is what I loved about TweetTech, what I loved about, because I'm not a, I never could afford a Bloomberg, hated Yahoo Finance. Yep. Don't, don't pay for walls. I don't want to pay for anything. Yep. But I will pay for stuff. We're learning in this environment, whether it's Netflix or, or Spotify, I'm paying. Yep. And in finance, I'll pay more than I pay for anything. I believe that people should pay for financial services, uh, especially data. I'm not against paying for data. I'm just, I, I think it should be a little more accessible. So what makes Coifin so interesting to me is the first time I saw it, I was like, wow. I mean, I'm not into fundamental research. I'm not into macro research. I don't care what the bonds are doing. Uh, but I could see how other people would like to see their data organized mm -hmm. like this. So um, it took me a while to get on board, but I was using the product very early. So so here's my watch list. What I think is really cool is you, you, you've been really adaptive at listening to guys like me who only really use – only have one unique way at looking at the mm -hmm. market. I don't want to learn. I'm 53 years old. I want to learn a new way to look at the market. So I have my watch list. I don't know if it's good the way I do my things, but I have my habits, and I want them. And I should. I believe other people should be able to copy my habits. Yep. So so part of like the whole social thing for me, and and you don't listen to me on all features as you shouldn't because I'm not product. But like you have this ability to um, understand. A thousand people telling you unique. I didn't have this ability, but you have this ability to like take a thousand ideas of mine and trying to cherry pick which ones actually make sense. So what I think is unique of all the things, there's a million things unique about Coifin, is that I came to you and said, shouldn't people be able to just see my watch list? Mm -hmm. I used to ask StockTwits to do this, and I've asked everybody to do this. Yep. But you somehow made it a way that I can, and if you sign into Coifin, uh, and just hit me up on email and I'll share my dashboard with you. Meaning I should be able to look over the shoulder of other traders, period, end of story. Yep. I know that sounds crazy to someone while we have proprietary data. Uh, why would I, that's, I make, that makes sense to me. If you're charging two and 20, yep. you know, fuck off. I don't want to share my list, but me, I don't give a shit who's following yep. me. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't, not going to affect my returns, at least in my opinion. Yep. Um, so I believe people sh it's like Twitch I believe people should be able to look over the shoulder yep. and gaming has proved it uh, and well yeah gaming Twitch and so I think Twitch for finance kind of matters at mm -hmm. some level yep. it may not be the massive global level uh, at the size of, of gaming but markets are a game and so I think you're the first that I think has done it well is I should be able to look over Howard's dashboard and see what it, I like Howard yep you know, see yeah. what you're doing. See what you're doing, or see what I'm looking at. Yep. If you peer through a product that I'm looking at, I think that's cool. Yep. That's my Peloton thinking. So yeah. Is that did that resonate with you, or is that am I wrong? A absolutely. Okay. So, so I think uh, such a critical part of investing is uh, is the discussion, debate around investments, and mm -hmm. kind of like seeing like, hey, what do you like? Why do you like it? Does that uh, jive with what I'm thinking? And if not, wh why is that? Um, so we wanted to think about like how do people do that, and the way we thought about it is around dashboards or groups of stocks uh, that you put together, whether it's thematic or uh, it's your kind of long list or your short list, mm -hmm. um, and you could choose the columns here. However, you want to look at the columns with a yeah, different view. Yeah, I mean, it's so, so powerful. We're not so, going to so, get into so it. So we're not going to get the function. So, so, so. The, and there is, if you go to Coifin, there's tutorials uh, and, and whatever. Uh, Hit us up on Twitter. Absolutely. Or so, so the um, uh, so the thinking here is that. Uh, you create something, you've created content here, you want to share it with other people, you want them to comment on it, we should make that real easy with one click of a button, and that's yeah. what we did. And is anybody doing that? Uh, does Bloomberg do that? So Bloomberg does it, uh, but you have to have a Bloomberg to... to obviously, obviously, but they so, do do it. So, they so have it's, features so, like that. So, so, it's, so it's kind of like a walled garden kind of system. Yeah. With, with us, you could just, anyone could do it, and obviously. And um, I don't, we're not going to show a demo here, but uh, what's really cool, because I never had search... You know, I get I get search. Yep. Uh, I don't use search the way people normal people should use search. Yep. I peck away at things and like I, I watch my wife do search and she types in like the whole word like a sentence and <laughs> two sentences and it works and I like it kind of works for her. I type in one word yeah. and see what happens. Uh, the way you've created search, why why does finance why do they why do they is search the key? 
So the way a Bloomberg works is there's no menu. You type everything. Yeah. So it's like because they were created in the is that Is that old or is that just the yeah, best way did, to do did it? Did you ever use MS-DOS? Do, no, no. It uh, freaked me out. Okay. <laughs> like, that's why Windows is as big as it is. Okay, it so, freaked out most so, people. So MS-DOS back in the day, you had to type the command. So if yeah. I wanted to change folders. That's why I like CoinMine, which is, like, is we're investors. And it's like it's taking something that there's no way I care about crypto. But the fact that it's, it's easy. I'm making it. yeah. Uh, in my in-laws' house, it's, yeah. you know, on their dime is right. interesting. To me. Right. So, so the way Bloomberg works is you have a command line and you like start typing what you yeah. want. So, if I want this, I'd have to like know the command and type yeah. it. It takes a really long time to learn that process, but once you actually know the commands, it's, fucking it's super fast. You're yeah. just like, and that's what you grew up doing, and that and that's what everyone on Wall Street who is a Bloomberg grows up doing. And Charlie, did that's what you did too at some point, right? Yeah. Yep. And the, there, there is no menu, so there is no kind of like, oh, I just want to browse. Like, you're, I didn't have a Bloomberg, and I and, yeah. and and the first time you encounter Bloomberg, if there's no one there, you're just like, I don't get it. What do I do? Got it. Because <laughs> it's just like a, a blinking cursor. Wow. And no, uh, now there's set layouts and stuff. N- no. No, now it's your the, first time. Uh, if you pay t- two thousand a month, your first thing actually, is a DOS no, flashing s- screen. Sorry, they they do have menus now, but shouldn't it's, it just come but, with but, like but it's a the, bucket of gold? And but, like but the some main Red Bull? the main functionality is still is still the uh, wow. is, is still yeah. The I'm friends line. with a lot of people there, and I, I if I had the money or if the Bloomberg said hi, we love you. We're going <laughs> to give you Bloomberg. They don't even give Trump. You know, they don't give no, anybody. No, no one. Yep. No one gets it for free. Um, which is genius. Yep. Uh, in its own right. Um, and I don't want to talk about Bloomberg, but I, I love the company. Yep. I, I love everything about the way they've cornered the market and about the elegance and Smart. The, and the silliness and the the behavioral tricks and all the other things that they do. Very smart. Mark, for, first social just, network? They are the first the social first network. So, smoking was the first social network. People would just smoke and stand around the campfire okay. and go, oh, we're smoking. Okay. So that was the first one. I mean, there was this no was typing. The, it was just, oh, you're a smoker. Right. And then Bloomberg is the f- literally the first social network. The first social yep. network. And it didn't start out as a social network. It started as a unique data set. It, 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 it started out. Bloomberg chat beat mid as when it became a, Bloomberg, a cor- social network. Correct. Meaning I have enough money to be in the network. Yep. Uh, if I pay, I'm in. Yep. I probably can say whatever the hell I want. Do yep. they kick people off for behavior? Uh, no, but the so the uh, within the so what happened was um, you started getting these rooms with like hundreds of people in the room, mm-hmm. and so because uh, if you're paying two grand a month, how do you complain? They kick, they don't want to w- kick w- you out. Well, so what would happen is someone would uh, say something shady, like, "Oh yeah, I just met with this guy and he told me like whatever." Oh. So it'd be a compliance violation, yeah. and then all the two thousand people would be tainted by that comment. Oh my goodness! And so the regulars would come in, and then and it, so it became oh a goodness. huge so, compliance. I mean, that, but that's a moat in a in that's its own a, way. It's a moat. Meaning it's a headache. It's a headache. That becomes a moat. It becomes a moat. Yep. So, so, okay. But so you have to be on Bloomberg to be part of this chat universe. My uh, personal opinion is whenever people talk about Bloomberg and they say Bloomberg uh, has this monopoly because of chat, I, I think. Don't. I think chat is way overrated. In yes. the, in the, Chat's like, way overrated. Uh, because you can chat on... Otherwise, that company that's raised hundreds of millions of dollars, whatever the hell it's Symphony, called... Symphony, yeah. Joke. <laughs> I hate to say that because I don't know. But, I mean, if you're building your company around chat, yeah. forget it. If that's your vision. What about Slack? Well, they're not doing it for finance. They're not doing it. That's, that's your card. Right. And they started with a unique yep. uh, attack. It didn't start out as like no, what it was going to be. And, they and didn't it, think it was going to ever be that. And by the way, it was a pivot. And, but, Slack was a pivot from a gaming company. Yeah, and I think their genius is integrating with all the other Absolutely. tools, which is, I, I don't which even is, know. It's which is more than And by the way, I don't use Slack. It's okay. the greatest thing in my life when I left StockTwits and Lo- Ian, the CEO, said, like, what the fuck are you on our Slack channel? You're not, you're not <laughs> yeah. like, Lo- Rupert Murdoch can't be on the Wall Street Journal right. Slack. Right. And it was a great thing he did for me. It was like, Slack's an addictive product. It like, is. How? What, I kind of worry about it. Like, takes, chat is unproductive at many levels. It is. It is. I think so now there's a backlash. I feel my life's better that I'm, you know, I I, I am back to uh, Twitter finally allowed me to do chronological, which means I don't care about the news. I never cared about news until Twitter fucked with my algorithm mm. and made me see a home screen. Mm. Then all of a sudden, I'm just seeing shit that they wanted me to see. Right. They were programming me. Now that Twitter, and I, it's not good for their business to have me in chronological order, but I like going into Twitter and seeing something completely unrelated to today's news. Right, right. Meaning somebody blurting out something right. about something. It should be your choice. It should be my choice. So I think that was a great move by Twitter. Yeah. I think it's four years too late, but hey, let's let's see. Maybe not good for their business, but chronological to me, just that's the market. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see things in chronological terms. And when I decide to sip from the higher fire hose, give, don't tell me what happened 10 minutes ago or tell me what's, you know what I mean? I yep. want to see what's happening now. Absolutely. 
And I think that's still Bloomberg's genius is about the way they organize around the stream, which yep. is what stocked when I saw when I saw Twitter. I'm like, I'm just going to do that for finance. It's never going to be Bloomberg, mm -hmm. but it's going to be real right. and it's going to be time stamped and right. you can't delete it and you know, worry about it later. So now that you've got, let's go back to the dashboard. So we have the dashboard. Yep. Uh, it's free. So you it's can go free. to Coifin and yep. get it for free. And it's a, it's a magical, beautiful product. It's, Even, a, it's an elegant product. Just to, It's like art on my screen. I mean, this is, when this is, the markets are open, this is dancing. And we love, even if we're not trading, it just makes us feel it's art. The, the reason, that, yeah, the flashing. I don't need to even see flashing. Okay. I just want real time, and I want to be able to just yep. see prices. To me, prices yep. are what matters. Yep. So, uh, do, you, do you use the command line? The top, the command. I love line? the command. Okay, cool. I'm not using it the way it needs to be used because yeah. I don't really care about financials. Got it. But I love that it's built for so, me. I love that I have something that I could use, yeah. and it's very powerful. And people that work with me, Danny, uses yeah, it. The command. And they want to teach me, but guess what? I've I've you, learned you to look at the thing? market this way. I want to know. The hottest momentum yeah. stock. So they give me a snapshot of the market. Yeah. Because I don't want to know everything. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not trading for a living. So, so Coifin version one was only command bar. Right. Because we were just like, and maybe you know that's what? why I didn't get you it. You know what? Re retail investors, they just want to type and go fast. And when we put it in front of people, they're like, w like what do you want me to do? Hmm. And we're like, oh, just you type. And it did not catch on. But at you all. do have the f top 15 clicks, or you figure that out. That's a hack. Uh, what do you mean? You know what the top 15 or 20 Bloomberg. Oh, functions are from from my own personal Your usage, own personal and, and you like, recreated those, and we and we we focused on that some more functionality. Reverse so, engineer, let's call it. Yes. You just kind of assumed what people would want. Yeah, so so it's like you know price chart and looking at fundamentals over time and looking at news okay. and looking at correlation and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So so we talked about that. So so how do you attack this when you you can't charge for this? I mean, we can charge for this. You're not charging for this. We we will charge eventually. So tell, tell me what you think the strategy is. Um, so the strategy is we are building uh, analytics to analyze data, um, and those analytics span different segments of investors. And mm -hmm. right now, uh, we're offering those uh, analytics to just the broad market, to retail investors, professional investors, um, and then going forward, we're going to specialize a lot more with both data and functionality. So okay. if you want to use Coifin for free and you want to use the basic functionality of like charting and and news, you mm -hmm. could always use it for free. Mm -hmm. um, but we will have more advanced functionality like portfolio analytics, like screening, like uh, uh, advanced or premium data, like international equities. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff that we'll charge for. But if you want to use Coifin for free and just focus on the basic stuff, we're always going to have a free version. And you can't just not be free forever. So what is your secret sauce right now? Obviously, you have a team in the Ukraine. Uh, our dev team is in Ukraine. And how easy hard is that? Most people can't pull this off. Uh, th there's definitely challenges. Uh, we we are very lucky to have the team that we have. And, and what do you use? Slack, Zoom? What do you use? Uh, we use Slack and, and Google Hangouts for communications and, okay. and stuff like that. So, uh, so that's, timing is good because the communication products are almost free. If, if so, so that's another thing talking about timing before um, if six years ago six years ago manage. we couldn't have done it because it cost too much for engineers and it, the data because I, I was be burning um, hundred grand a month on data we we were bootstrapping this for a long time yeah. and if we had to hire engineers in in New York we wouldn't be able to do it, it. my view is we, this needs to be attacked there's a moment in time where at least there's a middle that people could go after yeah yep. Google gave up yep they gave up yep maybe they should have. Uh, it sounds like from the hate that the people are so upset on Twitter and stock tweets that they gave up. It's not their business. It's not their business, but there's a business there. Yahoo's. I, I'm sorry. I love. I love the people. Uh, I don't know anybody left. I, I love the people. I it's it's a train wreck. Uh, but it has a lot of views, and it's like CNBC with some data. Mm -hmm. uh, who are the competitors? So our competitors uh, that you see uh, time uh, money. Uh, like, so, so I'd say a lot of people have, uh, like, we're not. I don't think uh, we claim that our product um, helps you predict the future in a better way or sure. gives you a better mousetrap. Yeah. But I think what we do is we bring a lot of data in one place so that you're not looking on different sites for bond data or econ data or fundamentals or anything that a fundamental equity analyst would have to look at, both within equities and more macro. So, if something happens in Italy or Europe. 
we'll have probably that data for you to look at the trend and sort of have a a uh, intelligent view on where it is in the 20 year history and where it could go. Yeah, without giving away the secrets, I think what has to happen next, I, if I live in UK or trade Bitcoin or live in India, I should be able to have global data. Absolutely. So that's coming. That's good. That's, so for yep. people who are listening in you know, my international audience, yep. uh, don't stress, that's coming. That's coming very soon. Eight, okay. eight weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Uh, what's another big thing that's being asked for that you can do, that you can deliver on? That's uh, not giving away too much of a secret. No, no, no. so uh, I'm I'm probably a little more. Uh, it's, it's funny when I started, I was so secretive about everything. I get that, it. I'm not and, saying and, anything. And, and, no, no, and but the more I do this, the more I realize. You I know me. I'm like, what? Give it away. How, no how hard? Listening. Like how? Like if I, I I can I will give our product roadmap for the next two years. Like I don't care I, because I it's agree. super difficult to execute on. Yeah. So and it's not the well, actual, someone would have to have the exact same vision. And exactly. So it's actually the UI and the UX, and it's like even our code. Like if someone stole our code, I don't think they could do anything why with is it. Because dark. Why do people care so much about dark mode? <laughs> uh, okay, so two reasons. One is if you have a Mac. Charlie, you use dark mode anything? No. If you is have it a, a young person, if thing? you if you have a Mac, uh-huh. um, then that's the only reason. No, 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 hold on. Our colors look great on your Mac because it has really high resolution. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a Mac and you have a uh, oh. a, sh- a crappy screen, mm-hmm. then our colors, the blue, they get all blurry. But so even on Twitter, or any site. Well, uh, any set and any set the colors look worse if so, so that's bad. number one okay. and the second thing is um, if you're looking at a screen a lot or in, in dark in, and it's it's bright it hurts okay. your eyes so you so did launch a dark mode we launched a dark mode and it's like, it's like the, the number one that people are just okay. ecstatic so you never can about. predict which one I give a shit okay uh, so, so what, you, what do people want that you really want to build um, so first of all we're, we're rolling out uh, our graphing is, is really good but we're going even further and making graphing tell me better. more <laughs> What? what? So uh, a lot of a lot more uh, technical indicators, uh, more ability to just put the charts wherever you want, so stack them above oh, one okay. another. Uh, so uh, make, the, make it more net vibey, like go backwards in time and let people put the things where they want. Well, well, drag and drop the modules wherever yeah, they want. Yeah, kind of, kind of like if you want to have four charts on top of each other and okay. different indicators, and if you want to graph. GDP how do you growth. decide when you're giving people too much, or how do you decide when to start charging for the features? Do you have you thought that through yet, or yeah. you don't care yet? It'll. Um, so we, we we're want, well funded, by the way. So if you think you're out there and you can do this again, we're well funded. We um, we we have a, a handful of features that we want to execute on, and after that, we are we're going to charge. So, uh, graphing version two, international equities is mm-hmm. is the other big Key. one. Uh, screening, like a screening tool, that's a big one that people ask us for, and well, especially uh, screening and sharing. Screening and sharing. Why make the people come up with their own screens? For, yeah, listen, if people want to come up with their own screen and keep it, they should. Yep. But people who want to screen and share with sixty friends. Yep. So they can all speed up. It goes to Peloton. It's like let people like give it away. Yep. So screening and sharing. S- screening and sharing, and then the last thing is portfolio analytics. So. Big one, I heard. Be, being able to put in um, like your number of shares and seeing kind of what exposure you have to which factors, to which sectors, uh, valuation of portfolios, stuff like that. So just giving people uh, a sense of uh, more color, more intelligence on, on what their portfolio looks like. What about news? Is that impossible to crack or how, how do you deal with we, news? Um, so it's funny. We, we have news on our platform. Uh, we always want to have news because you have to have news as yeah. like kind of table it's stakes. It's good news. Like, I don't know how you do it, but it's good. Uh, it's our second most used function. Wow. Which is, Damn, which I would never, and, and so uh, people, people it's want. It's good. When pe- I do check it, I don't know why I check it because I don't pe- care about pe- news. But so, so we've done a lot of Ticker news or the macro news? The, uh, more than top news, our top okay. news function. Top news. Top news. What's going on, like top news. Hey. Hey, listen, what, if they're living on your site, you should give them top yeah, news. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I, the numbers are staggering. What people are using this, like I'm on it all day. Yeah. So, so the dashboards, which is what uh, we looked at before, that's the number one use feature. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing is is real news. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what I want to do, I think there's a big opportunity, is uh, taking the the entire Twitter stream, and then um, basically analyzing it historically and categorizing different tweets, and letting people like look at, like if you look at a chart of. Uh, Tesla and seeing big moves. I want to put the most relevant tweets on there with categorized news news sources. Bloomberg's probably doing that in many ways. Uh, I'm friends with the news guys. They're not doing it quite. Th- th- in stock th- 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 you no. could do it with stock tweets. Yeah, too. you. Th- Bloomberg is doing it to some extent yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, a, a, my other argument is, what the hell was Twitter doing, giving that at any price, letting Bloomberg have the, the feed? Yeah, but I mean, the, what what are they going to do with it? Well, the point is, why give it away at any well, price? Well, it was worth more to Bloomberg. Than, tw- than they were willing to pay right, Twitter. Right, 
but both. Duraflame, major, should be in Harvard and Goldman Sachs strategy books. Better <laughs> screwed that deal up. They were trying to meet a quarter, and Bloomberg should not have that data. But what, what's the alternative, just to keep the data and not charge for it? Well, the alternative is Bloomberg would have to just keep ratcheting up the number if news breaks on Twitter. Yep. And you're paying 20 something hundred dollars a month for your Bloomberg. How valuable is your Bloomberg anymore? Infinity. So what? Anyways, it's it. Uh, you don't think so? You have never thought about that. I, it's it's a if, unless lucky the, for you. Listen, they're going to sell you me. the data Lu- too, and they're going to under they're going to undervalue yeah. what they sell it for. Yeah, I mean they were they they just don't get it. Yeah, it I, was invaluable to Bloomberg. Yep. And no matter so when no matter what Bloomberg pay, they were willing to pay. Yeah, I mean I think a lot of companies have built a business around uh, analyzing Twitter data. So, I mean, uh, but the only one that would pay the most is Bloomberg. Uh, no, meaning just getting the fire hose, forgetting about analog. I agree with you. Like once you give it away, who cares what Bloomberg does with it? Right. You shouldn't get, you should, you should just be suing them every time they look at the data. Right. Or or they should have uh, like a thirty second delay unless you pay us. Like, exactly. A Twitter number. should have delayed. Right. One hundred and forty seconds or fourteen seconds. Right. Ja- ja- Jack, Jack, if you're listening, yeah. I mean, Fred's <laughs> written about this. He okay. agrees with this. All they had to do. Is you Bloomberg you want it? Yeah, fourteen seconds delay. If not, what is your number? Right. And and then quadruple it. Right. And then quadruple it again and, and then pay that on a monthly fee and then we'll <laughs> think about it. That was the play. So what is the, the biggest hindrance for you going forward? It's capital? Uh, look, Time? it's 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 like any any startup we need uh we need capital, we need users, we need employees, all all the things. But uh it's good to be nimble. I think we move pretty fast. Do you uh, feel people are getting it? You know what? Over the past six months, uh, there's been a lot of traction. You know so. what? Six months ago, we invented, like it, it was us. So it, it's, 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 it correlates with when we started caring. I, I think so. Well, our our um, it was it was it was really odd because like uh, I always had this vision, which we're now finally executing on. And when I first pitched to people, they're like, "You've never well, done this I before." I got it, but I wasn't but, there. You but, weren't there. But yet. We weren't there yet. And then like one year in, people were just like, "I don't get it." And then two years in, people were just like, "I don't get it." And like two and a half years in, so it's already like, been two and a half years. Oh, I was about kinda, a year and a half where I was like, "Come back to me." I kept checking on you. You kept checking. You kept hanging around the hoop. Yeah. Well, this hoop is like bugging me, even though I don't care because I don't need to trade every day. I stand as far away from this as possible. I think of it as art, and yeah. I, there's a product in the middle that needs to exist. And yeah. It's just fascinating to me that everybody's just slowly just given up. Yeah. So either we're completely wrong, which is fine. Yeah. Like, I'm fine being completely wrong, or. No, I, th- I think. Well, we got to be completely right. You, yeah, I think I think you're I think you're do-it-yourself thesis, like your kind of long-term thesis that people just want to do it yourself. Um, you know, if someone uh, investors want to research the investments themselves, they don't want someone at Morgan Stanley giving them a rating. They want to yeah. actually dig into the numbers. Well, I think the timing here in your favor. I don't know if you know this, but like the way I think about it, and hopefully I'm right mm-hmm. for your sake, even if you don't care, yep. is that. We've never had a moment other than since 99 where all these people were onboarded. So Acorns, Robinhood, yep. StockTwits, Twitter, yep. uh, Reddit traders, uh, eToro, uh, Chime Bank, um, uh, on and on, uh, Coinbase. There's 20 million yep. new investors in the last year. Yep. Say, like the, the banks have no net around. Yep. And so you use Robin, so you use eToro, so you use Coinbase. God bless. You should. Everybody's on board. But now they have no tools. Right. And they're not going to go open a TD Ameritrade account to trade the Robin. Maybe they will. They're nuts. So they got to discover Coifin. So we yeah. got to figure out how to get those onboarded. And not all 20 million are going to survive. Let's say 2 million survive. That's a lot more customers than Bloomberg ever had. Yeah. Uh, but, but to sell a art, to sell data visualization. Yeah, I, look, I think like Robin Hood. So I'm talking about to VCs who are listening and don't <laughs> have their act together, and 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 hit me up and go, "What's the total addressable market?" It's yeah. fucking mind boggling. Right. What's it's, the total addressable market? It's infinity. It's 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 re- so. I think on the on the low end, I think a lot more users are going to go uh, from kind of your basic Robin Hood account of like, "Hey, I'm just buying." Uh, well, they'll keep um, it forever, maybe, but they need more. they're gonna, they're going to keep Robinhood, going to trade through Robinhood. But in terms of understanding what they're buying and why they're buying, and and why it's going down and why it's moving relative to other stocks, 
they're going to need tools to do that. And that's what yeah. we're going to provide. Um, so that's on the kind of more mass market side. And then we're going to continue to offer more advanced functionality to really uh, solve the problems of people who have the money to pay for it, whether it's yeah, financial advisors land or and expand. land and expand. That's right. All right. So on that note, let's uh, wrap it up. Thanks. That was cool. fun. That awesome. How do you do? Uh, I, I feel great. How do you do, Charlie? You killed it. Gents? Pretty good. Solid job. Pretty good. Cold. Do you get the markets now? Do you understand them yet? <laughs> Better than it. Yeah. Better than I did. See, that's the goal. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks, Howard.